What's going on, YouTube? Welcome back to Camera Real One. This is Lee. And yes, today's the day you all been waiting for. You voted for this. This is the most anticipated lens review you guys wanted me to review. This is the Pentax HD Pentax DA Star Glass Lens 11 through 18. 2.8 aperture, ED, DC, AW lens, and yes, that's a mouthful, guys. That is a mouthful. Pentax, why do you do this to me? Why? This lens is about 1400 USD. It has 16 elements, nine blades, 82 millimeter filter thread, 700 grams, and of course, it features the HD coating. Now, for those guys that have been watching my videos, you guys know about the HD coating. It's there too, guys, it's there. This lens also features the super coat, the SP coating. It helps the front element from grease and water. And also, of course, this is an AW lens, which is all weather resistant lens, of course. It's supposed to be dust proof and uh, it can operate in negative 10 degrees to 40 degrees Celsius, but you won't see me out there. It's just too crazy. That's just too crazy. Negative 10 Celsius, I don't, I would just be at home at that point. Also, this lens features the quick shift focus. Basically, you could autofocus on your subject and then manual focus right away without any issues. And of course, the focus clamp. Now, this is a heaven sent for all the astrophotographers out there. Once you get your stars in place, everything is focused, you can hit the switch and it will turn off the focus, basically. So you will never be able to change focus by accident once you're able to capture the stars. So this is a great feature for those astrophotographers out there. One last thing, guys. I don't know if this is a feature or not, but this is what Pentax is, you know, claiming. I'm, I have not tried this out. I don't expect people to do this, but there's another feature that I will have to, you know, tell you guys. Essentially, there's a dedicated space for wrapping an optional heating device around your lens. And basically, during cold temperatures, it could, you know, eliminate the condensation, you know, so it doesn't fog up your lens and stuff like that. So, with that said, I don't carry any of those devices. I Maybe someone else out there do, but you guys, do actually do that. Uh, definitely leave a link below to what you guys are heating up your lens because I don't, I don't know the last, I don't know anyone that heat up their lenses, but there's, there's an option now. Pentax says it's on their website, so don't blame me if you guys fry your lens. This is what they said, and I never tried it out, so please do not try this out. This sounds a little weird. But anyways, most of you guys are tuning in because you guys want to see the quality of the lens. So let it begin, guys. First things first, let's talk about the flare. Now, this lens do have flare. 2.8, f4, 5.6, 8. There is flare if you're shooting directly at the sun. However, in comparison to my Rokinon 14 millimeter, the flare actually handles much better on the 11 to 18 in comparison to my 14 millimeter 2.8 aperture lens by Rokinon. Yes, as you can see, side by side, the flare on the Rokinon actually bleeds in the image, whereas the 11 through 18, the flare does not bleed into the image. So that's something for you guys to jot down your notes on this lens. Number two, the vignetting. Now, there is vignetting in this lens. It starts at 2.8 to 4, and at 5.6, there's actually no more vignetting. So that is something for you guys to also take note of. Number three, the chromatic aberration. Now, with the HD coating, of course, you will get chromatic aberration. I'm sorry, guys. You will get the chromatic aberration. It's there. It's, it's you know, obvious. 2.8, f4, 5.6, f8. It is in the image. However, with software, you can remove most of it. However, with also with software, you can zoom in even more into your image and you can see slight thin hair of chromatic aberration left after the removal. So this is something for you guys to know about. Number four, distortion. Now, Pentax never said anything about it's distortion-free lens. So let's take a look. Here is 11 millimeter of the brick wall. Here is 14 millimeter of the same brick wall with one step back. Here is 16 millimeter of the brick wall with another step back. Here is 18 millimeter of the brick wall with another step back. So with that said, in my test, I believe 11 through 13 is when you're gonna have the most distortion. 14 and up is when you're gonna have less distortion. And obviously, if you turn on lens correction in your Pentax KP, you could definitely, you know, adjust that in camera. And if you look at your Lightroom, there is also a setting for that as well. So, but without any software or any help, let's check out the 14 millimeter Rokinon versus 14 millimeter of the 11 through 18. This is what it looks like on the Rokinon. 
This is what it looks like 11 through 18 at 14 millimeters. Big difference, guys. This tells me that the distortion control on this lens is really good. Number five, bokeh. Now, this lens has nine blades, and of course, bokeh is really smooth. Plain and simple. Number six, autofocus. Now, so many people have been asking me about the autofocus. Is it good on the K1? Is it good on KP? I think people were asking me the wrong questions probably because the autofocus works just fine on both. It focused like the exact same speed and everything. I didn't see any noticeable difference. I think people were actually asking was how is the hit rate? Now, the hit rate is a totally different story. And actually I uh, did a chart for my KP test and it's not looking too good. Uh, basically, long story short, I missed it about one shot per four shots, pretty much. Sometimes I miss two. Yes, okay, three times I missed two out of 12 series of shots. So with that said, uh, the KP was pretty, uh, it was pretty, it was okay. I, I'll give it like a C plus at this point, B minus C plus, but on the K1, it was actually really good. It actually was snappy. It actually got most of my images in focus. I maybe missed only like three shots maybe or something. So that is something for you guys to know. And I think it's because K1 actually has a firmware update for the DA lens, whereas the crop sensor doesn't have the firmware update for the 11 through 18. Now, that is, that is a little weird, Pentax, but you guys did that. I don't know why, but for everyone else, you guys shouldn't worry about this because if you guys are shooting landscapes or stills, you guys know better. You guys know that you're not even autofocusing that much. You guys are zooming in, live zoom, you guys are manual focusing your subject with focus peaking on. And also, if you're shooting with the K1, your image will be a lot smaller because it'll be 16 megapixels. So that is something for you guys to know about. It'll be the same exact composition, but smaller image. Number seven, sharpness. Now, a lot of people have been asking me this question. Around 5.6, that is the sweet spot in this lens. Center sharpness and edge to edge sharpness. Around 2.8 and f4, your corners will be slightly blurry, so you'll end up cropping around that aperture speed. Around f8, I notice it's slightly softer than 5.6, so that's something for you guys to know. And to give you guys some more context than just saying it's really nice, here is a 14 millimeter Rokinon shot right here. Here is the Pentax 11 through 18. Now, a wide open aperture, 2.8 on a sunny day, this is what you get. As you can see already, the Rokinon cannot handle the brightness of the scene. Your, your images turn slightly softer. With the 11 through 18, definitely the image is a lot better, wide open at 2.8. Now at 5.6, when you're close up to your subject, this is what it looks like. Crazy enough, it looks exactly the same. Yeah, it kind of do. I have Rokinon 5.6 versus 11 through 18, 5.6, it looks exactly the same. So in conclusion, a lot of people ask me this question, should you buy this lens? This is 1400 USD. Check out what Pentax have to say about this lens for you guys. They're taking shots at their own lens to let you guys know that this is the best of the best lens out there that they ever made, star glass center. Now, that is something interesting. I never seen a company take shots at their own previous lens. That's something new to me. But with my experience with the lens, number one, one feature that I like about this lens is it's lightweight. Number two, definitely the filter thread is a huge game changer because if you own the 15 and 30, you don't have any filter thread without breaking the bank pretty much. That is a miracle guys. This lens, you can take off the lens hood and definitely put a 82 millimeter filter thread on it. So huge game changer for landscape shooters. That is something that I really like about this lens. And number three, the clamp. Now this is pretty huge for all the Astro shooters out there. Once you get your star scene focus, you just hit on the switch and that's it. No more issues of missed focus. That is a huge, huge feature for a Pentax glass. That is really, really important for a lot of astrophotographers out there, especially you have the astro tracer in your camera body. That's just a complete package for anyone out there that's shooting the stars. And so with all that said, should you buy this lens? Should you actually go out and purchase this lens? Well, in my next few videos, if you're following me on Instagram, you guys already know that I was testing this particular setup with a new setup, the Fuji X-T30 with their eight through 16 millimeter lens. Yes, I am putting these two camera companies head to head to see 
what are we getting between each cameras because i could tell you guys this is the best of the best pentex lens 11 through 18 yada 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 but let's compare this with the competition out there let's see what our people are shooting out there because i see a lot of fuji shooters that are doing landscape i want to know are we missing out something if there's a feature that you know pentex is not doing that fuji is doing or is fuji doing something that pentex is not doing so this would be a great way to kind of cross paths between both companies a lot of people know that fuji is a really popular APS-C system and so is pentex and so i just want to show everyone the difference between both brands because i feel that honestly every brand has something special to offer so let's definitely take a look so definitely click like to subscribe if you like this video and please put me on your instagram and i guess i'll see you guys next all right take it easy peace